In this video, we'll show you the basics when it comes to dealing with scenarios, which are a key feature of the platform. There are two object processing modes, standard and synchronous. Let's look at how an object gets into a scenario and how it's processed. Create a new scenario and choose a structure for it to work with. Then select Run using the New Objects trigger. Note that scenarios always use objects from structures and can't function separately. You can change the name of a scenario or the structure it works with using the Start step. Let's create a simple scenario that checks with the Condition step whether the title field of a book is not empty. If the title field is empty, the scenario will stop. But if the field isn't empty, it will also stop. However, you will be able to understand how the object was processed by looking at the scenario's counters. Be sure to publish the scenario after editing it. Next, you can either stop the scenario or run it. Scenarios are stopped by default, so click the Run Scenario button. Next, go to the book structure that the scenario works with. Let's add a new book. Fill in the title, A Hero of Our Time, by Mikhail Lermontov, and create the object. Then look at the counters and logs. You see that the scenario processed one object. You can see details of how the steps processed the object in the logs. Actually, scenarios don't react to all new objects, but only to objects created with the event. Let's create a new object, the Novice, by Mikhail Lermontov, and save it without the event. As you see, according to the counters and logs, nothing happened. The scenario didn't process that object. Remember, for new object processing scenarios to process objects, the object must be created with the event. Now let's look at the next trigger, changed objects. If you don't specify the fields you need, the scenario will react to any changes. If you choose specific fields, it will only respond to changes in those fields. Let's add the title and poster fields to the trigger list. Don't forget to publish a new version of the scenario after editing and checking. Go to the Books structure and change the object that corresponds to The Novice. For example, add an exclamation mark to the title. Save the changes with the event and look at the scenario. The counters were updated and the logs show the processing of this object. You can even expand the object and look at its fields in the logs. Let's experiment and change a field that you didn't add to the trigger list, like the year of publication, 1839. The object changed, but as you see in the logs, there was no processing. Let's change the same object again by removing the title. Save the changes with the event and check the scenario. It worked. Moreover, the title equals not empty condition resulted in false. OK, now you understand how the changed object trigger works. Don't forget about the events that must be created. It doesn't matter whether objects are created manually through an API or in another scenario. If necessary, objects can be processed by the scenario manually using the debug menu. Copy the object ID, open the debug panel, and drop the object into the scenario. You see in the logs that the processing was successful. This is a good method for one-time processing of objects and debugging scenarios. OK, let's move away from object processing for now and look at scenario versioning. You can look at the version history by clicking the Edit Scenario button. 
and going to the Version History tab. A new version is created each time you publish a scenario, but you can always roll back to any previous version. So let's go back to Object Processing and look at the Link Scenario step. First, you need a scenario to be linked. Name it Linked Scenario 1. This scenario will work with the book structure and won't have any triggers because it will be called manually. Let's make a simple two-step scenario consisting of only the start and exit steps. Publish and run it. Now go back to the first scenario and configure the Link Scenario step. You'll send the current object to Linked Scenario 1. Let's save the changes, publish the scenario and check it using the Debug menu by sending one object. You can see from the logs that everything worked. Let's look at the Linked Scenario. It also processed the one object you sent, the current one from the first scenario. Let's create another scenario, Linked Scenario 2. It will work with a different data structure, the authors. Similarly, it will have no triggers. Publish and run it. Go back to the first scenario and add another Link Scenario step. It will no longer send the current object, but an object associated with it, a linked object. So you'll send a book's author to that scenario. Select the author's structure as the link to the object and set Linked Scenario 2 as a scenario to call. Publish the scenario and check it using the Debug menu. Similarly, you can work with arrays of linked objects. If you choose an array link, you can send a whole bunch of objects whose IDs are listed in the array link field to the linked scenario. You can see from the linked scenario 2 logs that everything worked fine. The object, or author, Alexander Pushkin, was successfully processed. Now let's look at the next trigger type, which can run a scenario for the whole structure or just for its part. Go back to the first scenario and choose the manually or by schedule trigger. Choose the run manually option and publish the scenario. You see a new option in the other actions tab. Push all objects to the scenario. You see in the logs that 10 objects were processed. That's how many objects you have in the structure. In fact, you just send the entire structure for processing. Let's see how to set up the trigger to work for only part of the structure. For example, if two objects meet the year published is greater than 1870 condition, you can add a similar condition to the start step. Save the changes, publish the scenario, and run it for all objects. Now the logs show that only the two objects satisfying this condition were processed. Great! Let's see how to set up scenarios to work by schedule. Go back to the Start Step settings and choose Run Regularly. Now set the schedule, every minute, every hour, or every day, and so on. You can set up what's called a cron expression if you need a more complex schedule. You can find out how to set up a cron expression with examples in the documentation. Save the scenario and publish it. In the logs, you see that it now runs every minute. Be careful though, if you have a large structure and it's scheduled to be processed often, like every minute or every hour, it can put a high load on the application. Now let's look at another type of processing 
synchronous. Synchronous means that an external system, like an API, a webhook or a scenario, will wait for the scenario, which runs synchronously, to finish processing. Let's start by looking at how it works with API endpoints. Create a new endpoint for the book structure. Mark the ID, title and year of publication fields as available for reading, and only the title field as available for writing. Next, let's remove all triggers from the scenario that works with the book structure because it will only work by an API call, synchronously. Be sure to run the scenario after publishing. Now go to the API endpoint configuration and choose the scenario to run synchronously. Let's check it using the already familiar Postman. We learned how to use that in another video about API. Send a post request to the API endpoint. Write the title, The Sale, by Mikhail Lermontov, and send it. As you see, in return you get back the ID and title. You can't see that the processing was synchronous in the API yet, but in the logs you see that it was. Now let's add the Edit Object step to the scenario to see that it processed the object before it sent the response to the endpoint. Let's change the year of publication to 1839. That's the year when The Demon by Mikhail Lermontov was published. You'll now write it to this endpoint. Great! In the response, you see the year of publication, which was recorded by the scenario, and in the logs, you see that the processing was synchronous. OK, let's see how synchronous processing works with webhooks. Create a new webhook. It automatically has a default scenario that triggers on all new objects. Let's create a new object using Postman. Make a post request to the webhook. you'll get a standard response, status OK. You see the processed object in the scenario, the default, and the one you created with Postman. Let's select the same scenario, make it work synchronously, and send another object. Look at the scenario. You see that the processing was duplicated. There was both standard and synchronous processing. To remove the duplication, you need to remove all triggers. Remove the standard trigger on new objects, publish the scenario, and check it again using Postman. Now you see that there are no duplicates. The object was only processed once. The synchronous scenario can generate a special response for the API. It doesn't matter if it's an API or a webhook. For example, right now you can reply with the text, a new object with this ID has been created. You can also specify the return code, save the changes and check how the webhook responds to the request. It doesn't respond with the standard message, status OK. Now it uses the response you configured in the scenario. And the last thing we'll look at for now is how to run scenarios synchronously using the Link Scenario step. Set up Linked Scenario 1 and specify that it should run synchronously. In this case, the object will wait until the Linked Scenario is finished, and only then will it go further through the steps, in this example, through the Edit Object step. Let's check and run it. You see that the object was processed by the usual standard processing, and the scenario you linked processed the object synchronously. One pass of an object through a step is one processing operation, standard or synchronous. And on the dashboard, you can see the number of operations you've already spent.